everybody. Thank you for joining us for another Healthy Seas Web Lab. This is a very, very special one. We are going to get into design in a major way and we are going to talk about the past, the present and the future of sustainable design. I'm not going to hang around and do a long introduction because we've got so much to get through and our guests are so great that I want you to hear from them remember to ask questions just put them in the chat box the q a box not the chat box the q a box if you put them in the chat box jenny will tell you off and then she'll put them in the q a box uh, that's how we work if you've come to one of these webinars before we like them to be really interactive and we really like your questions uh, okay before i introduce our panelists let's hear uh, from Jenny from Healthy Seas. Without Jenny, none of this would happen. And she's going to explain a little bit about Healthy Seas and why we're here today. Over to you, Jenny. Uh, thank you, Lucy. Well, this year we celebrate five years of meaningful partnership with Carvico and Jersey Lomelino. They are leaders in sustainable textile manufacturing and they possess the exclusive license for the swimwear market for the use of Econil regenerated yarn. Econil is made of fishing nets, including the ones collected by healthy seas and other nylon waste. Despite a very difficult year, marine protection and the support of our work remains a priority for Carvico and Jersey Lomanila, which we deeply appreciate. So we're very happy to have them as guests today. Two years ago, they made one of our dream projects come true. Uh, with their support, we made it to Santorini, Greece. Uh, you see the photo behind me. I'd like to be there again uh, to clean up the surrounding area from ghost nets. Here, Yves Cousteau narrated the operation from beneath the waves and we live streamed it to the public worldwide. While innovation is a core principle of their business model, they are also a company that values tradition, which might just be the key to their success. So, good luck with this webinar. I know there's a lot of uh, interested uh, members of the public looking forward to listening to our speakers today. Thanks, Jenny. So let me introduce our panel. Just uh, give us a wave when I mention your name, if you would, panelists, that would be very helpful. Uh, Simona Osio is from Carvico. Hello, you're very welcome, Ciao. Simona. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. We just, we just heard a little bit about, um, about the business and we'll, we'll learn a little bit more. Uh, let me just ask you, how are you feeling at the moment? Are you feeling optimistic, excited, hopeful? Or depressed or gloomy tell me how no. you're feeling oh my feeling must be optimistic we want to believe in the business and in the in the end of the pandemic sooner or later and uh, we believe that uh, the road we are following uh, is the right one even if now it's full of difficulties like for everyone but we believe at the end that we will be stronger than before okay very good sentiments to start us off. Very good. Lorenzo Getzi, give us a wave. Hi. Lorenzo. Hi, Lorenzo. Hi. Tell us, tell me really quickly what your job is. How do you explain your job to people? Trying to sell our fantastic fabrics. That's oh, what I try that must to be so every easy. Day. Every day. It's, it looks easy. It's not. <laughs> you make it look easy. Everybody wants them. Anyway, we will, we will learn a little bit more about that process. And last, but by no means least, we have Angelo. Angelo Figus. Hello. Hey, hello. Hi, everybody. Thanks for uh, Angelo that. hails from Sardinia. Um, I've even got his date of birth here. Angelo, you're younger than me. Everyone is younger than me. <laughs> everybody. Um, Angelo almost needs no introduction. He is a fashion designer who um, has done it all, really. Uh, yeah, this all, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he studied um, at the Academy of Fine Arts, Antwerp, and has also uh, been in charge of design, product development, uh, including ready-to-wear shoes and accessories. Um, we're going to hear a little bit of his expansive knowledge now, all of our panelists, if you have questions, don't be shy because you may not get an opportunity like this ever again with them all in the one place. <laughs> um, uh, oh, we, uh, Jenny's asking where everyone's joining us from. So everybody tell Jenny where, where you're joining us from because we love it when we go around the world and we find out oh, where you're so all from. Funny. Let's start with some questions um, because we want your questions as well. Uh, Simona, could you tell us a little bit more about Carvico and how you particularly approach materials and sustainability. So I know that research 
is very, yes. very important to you guys. Yeah. Can you tell us why? Okay, so Carvico has been uh, the benchmark for the warp knitted industry for a long time, like uh, Gersilo Melina is uh, for the circular knit. So when you are the leader of an industry, and if you want to remain the leader of the industry, you must, need, you must be one step ahead. So in fact, we started focusing on sustainability when uh, nobody else was even talking about that. We were pioneers in many different ways, uh, like, uh, either using a new machine to dye fabrics with the less water or using a new dye stuff uh, with a lower impact on the environment. And research is fundamental because you need to look for new opportunities on the market and new possibilities and also to find the quick solutions to all the problems that arise when you are the first one to do something because there are a lot of problems, of course. Using recycled yarns, in fact, was not easy at all at the beginning. We tested and changed a lot of yarns because uh, the quality standard was quite poor at the beginning. And so we insisted, however, on this because we believed that that, that was the right direction to go. And this is uh, what we are doing now. Now we, we open the way to these uh, fantastic yarns. Um, very, very um, good thing to remember. Sorry, I don't know what that's going on. A uh, very good thing to remember when you are the leader of an industry, you must be one step ahead. I like that. That's so, so true. Um, Lorenzo, can you tell us how you came across Healthy Seas and Ikenil and this idea of using, well, waste from the ocean? And did it appeal immediately? Well, a question for you did you know you could sell it? <laughs> yeah, at the beginning, it was very strange <laughs> to to hear something like this. You know, Simona was saying we were one of the first to explore the um, uh, recycled material in synthetic fabrics. Uh, I'm talking about when we started 10 years ago, approximately, uh, the yarns we, ha we had available were what is called the post-industrial um, recycled yarn, which means basically waste and scraps from the production of the yarn or second choice, which are reused again. Uh, that was given a lot of limitations in terms of quality and because we have the main benchmarking quality, you know, we cannot find any compromise anyway uh, on quality. Mm, and plus uh, the uh, idea of uh, reusing the scraps of the production was not very appealing to the public. And uh, when uh, we decided to develop uh, sustainable fabrics uh, using Econil, um, we found this raw material, which is not only using post-consumer uh, wastes, so very different from the post-industrial because it uh, uh, takes back uh, um, materials that have come to the end of their life and uh, we are taken back uh, to produce new nylon, but only a part of this post-consumer um, materials were coming from uh, ghost fishing nets. So this is when we uh, became aware of the existence of LTCs and we decided to support them because plus uh, to the product itself, LTCs is also a, uh, gives also a message that uh, sits very well with uh, a lot of the customers we have uh, because we sell a lot uh, of our fabrics for swimwear and uh, what uh, what is best to offer a fabric that is actually coming from the sea if you want so we we find uh, we find the message very appealing and uh, especially also very true brilliant thank you and that's a real thing isn't it if you can make your message and your story fit together uh, yeah. and it resonates with people yes. that's right. when we get some lift off okay brilliant so we've heard from Simona we've heard from Lorenzo and now let's hear from Angelo Angelo how do you fit into the picture when did you get involved well I get involved um, five about five years ago uh, for a very specific aspect of, um, of uh, my job because um, well apart from uh, being a fashion designer uh, since, uh, since I graduated at the Academy of Antwerp, I'm uh, very much busy as a trend and color forecaster. 
so I'm in charge since uh, practically since uh, 2000 um, um, from for the uh, Spazio Ricerca, the Trend Forum of uh, Pitti Filatti, which is basically um, a, a leading show for high-end yarns uh, for the world of knitwear and fabrics. I have to say it's a much more um, natural uh, field, but I, I guess also that our paths meet because of that. Uh, they cross because of that, because I was doing a lot of research in terms of uh, uh, mixing uh, materials in order to see what the possibilities were in terms of design. Um, and funny enough, Carvico was looking for uh, actually a different approach to turning and twisting uh, fabric into um, into something else. I would like to show you something if you uh, allow me. Um, when I discover Carvico, can you see my screen? Yeah, uh, when I discover yeah, Carvi see. Carvico, I found, of course, a reality that I knew because uh, they are uh, uh, huge and so appealing and, uh, fascinate and very fascinating. I, of course, I knew because of the, of the work uh, uh, of uh, swimwear and um, uh, technical uh, uh, apparel, sportswear. They wanted to uh, turn uh, and explore a fabric into their fabric, their product in a totally different dimension. So we started playing with, uh, uh, with the polyamide and with their product uh, to turn it uh, more close to ready to wear, uh, turning into uh, leather, turning into denim feeling uh, and starting to treat them uh, with um, uh, with techniques that were totally unusual for this kind of product. Uh, for example, the denim uh, area. Then we went a little bit further, experimenting with, um, um, with the more couture. Uh, so using those fabrics in terms of uh, uh, more sartorial uh, usage. And we went to a very sophisticated line, very elegant, really high hand design. But it's all actually done with swimwear fabric. That was quite fascinating because it was really challenging uh, the uh, category with the comfort as well. Then we sweep a little bit, uh, we swift uh, into mixing materials. So cashmere with their, uh, or viscose or blend of knitwear with their beautiful uh, technical uh, material. Uh, having the um, warmth and the feeling of a um, very high-end knit with a super technical and performing fabric. So there was the touch of uh, natural, but the super performance, aesthetic and uh, uh, technical of, uh, of their uh, fabrics. Then we presented, of course, to the public in uh, different locations in Florence uh, uh, and Paris, uh, um, for example, playing with the spaces, really making environments, uh, sort of uh, um, experiencing their fabric in a very three-dimensional areas. And that was also a very interesting challenge. Naturally, we went to furniture um, because uh, uh, there was uh, there was and there is a need of uh, uh, sportify a little bit surfaces uh, in terms of furniture, and then we brought back all those skills into very classic uh, menswear. Uh, so it looked very classy, very sleek, but it's uh, actually as comfort uh, as comfortable as a swimwear. So. Then we went back, of course, this is the market. This is uh, very high hand because the fabric, they are no longer used for swimwear only. And they are opening up to a, a totally new possibility in terms of design. This is for me the, really ch the real challenge and the most intriguing part from high, uh, from uh, haute couture to uh, streetwear. Um, the fabric was uh, so interesting to explore in terms of uh, shaping up light uh, and spaces and uh, the new idea of, of comfort, uh, the new idea of uh, uh, stockage, uh, the new idea of uh, dividing and inviting into spaces, a new idea of sharing spaces with friends and people you met. A really a new way, a really new world for a new fabric that was promising really so much with an unparalleled uh, possibility of usage in terms of upholstery too. And um, here I think we will lead at the end to a new, uh, really a new approach to design um, because uh, a product like a trousers maybe there will be uh, they will be designed in order to become something else uh, later on and then become uh, like a furniture maybe to extend their life and to uh, fully cycle the whole production. I think design can really be a tool. 
uh, before I close, uh, I'd like to uh, say something about um, uh, the time we are living. It's a very important uh, um, uh, concept. Uh, we, I feel like uh, what was happening in the late uh, 80s, beginning 90s with uh, Margiela, who is uh, definitely the um, unparalleled um, and uh, unsurpassed designer of uh, upcycling. It's uh, a bit what is happening today. Um, he set it up a totally different vision of uh, upcycling. It was, by the way, the very first one to use swimwear uh, fabrics into into a ready to wear uh, high end collection, and um, his attitude was a really uh, totally uh, a break with what was happening at the time because uh, this was his first show and this is what what uh, what was the image of the fashion in the in the eighties uh, uh, late eighties beginning nineties. And plus, in the same years, um, uh, there was Catherine Amnet, uh, which is still, uh, um, which is still uh, uh, one of the most important designers in terms of sustainability, launching those messages. And um, why I'm citating those uh, 80s? Because uh, uh, I feel that uh, we are exiting a little bit, uh, um, in a way, the same decadent age that we had uh, in the 80s. And there is uh, so much to discover and so much to question about it. Um, so I feel that uh, sustainability in this extent can be, uh, let's say, human sustainability. Uh, so the big brands, uh, they will uh, support uh, um, social and ethical projects uh, because sustainability in a, in a first extent has to be human. Um, we, we won't waste, we won't waste uh, uh, anything anymore because uh, uh, we will uh, recycle even design, uh, designer garments becoming new designs uh, like uh, uh, Duran Lightning. Or maybe as a leading global brand, uh, we will uh, pass um, from half, from the 50% to the 100% of recycled material for a very, very large public. So it's a huge, uh, it's a huge, huge challenge. Or as a, a very fresh brand, so we will be uh, more and more engaged uh, in terms of uh, uh, sustainability and recycling of uh, materials, uh, because basically we have to clean this mess. Uh, or we can live like uh, elves. This is also a possibility. Uh, but I think that uh, in the next uh, um, in the next ten years, we will take all those three elements together, and we will image. Uh, um, a different uh, uh, design in uh, a different way of uh, um, thinking in terms of design and sustainability. Angelo, thank you so much for that. That was amazing uh, and such a quick uh, turn through all of this history and all of this potential. And um, a, a couple of people just uh, commenting in the chat box how beautiful your images are as well. Thank so you. thank you so much for that. Um, so let's build on what Angelo has taught us or reminded us of then. And I'm going to fold in a question as well, because Joe Godden, thank you for your question. We're going to talk a little bit about, and this is for Simona and Lorenzo. Start with you, Simona. Yeah. Where are you now in this journey? Because you, I think you do see it as a journey. And Joe wants to know, what um, you're planning to do to close the loop, particularly with you swimwear and activewear yeah. fabrics. <laughs> this is exactly what I was going to tell you. Right. Uh, when we launched our first fabric with, with post-consumer recycled nylon, we had already one goal in mind, and it was uh, to have the possibility to separate uh, the yards that make our fabrics, which is nylon and lycra, in order to recycle them further when the garments have reached the end of their lives. So we don't throw them in the landfill, but we can recycle them and use the same raw material for it. We committed a research to an American university to let them study the way to separate the yarns and they made it in the laboratory but to make it on an industrial scale is totally a different thing a totally another story and unfortunately to make that on an industrial scale you pollute uh, more than expected so we are further investigating and studying with our yarn suppliers the way to do this because closing the loop of infinite recycling is our target since day one is what is where we want to go 
It's not our dream. Yes, it's our dream, but it's not just a dream. We are working hard to get that. Thank you. And thank you for being so transparent about the process. It's really important. Lorenzo, I want to ask you about it as well yeah. um, and how you communicate the journey and how you keep everyone with you and on board. Yeah, I'd like to actually to add something to what Simona just said because uh, uh, the closing the loop, it's really been the the goal since day one. Um, uh, I have to say that the full circularity of our fabrics uh, involves a lot, uh, in my opinion, also the uh, job uh, that Angelo is doing, uh, which is designing garments. Um, in order to be uh, fully circular, you need, yes, a raw material which is uh, recycled and can be recyclable, but also garments need to be designed in a way that can, they can be easily recycled. I mean, you cannot think of recycling um, swimsuits or um, suits that are full of embellishments or uh, parts that cannot be recycled. So to come to the 100% recyclability of a garment, uh, a big uh, part of the job uh, must be done uh, by designers themselves. Uh, so they, probably the, the way things and garments are designed uh, need to be changed in the future. Uh, I don't see this as being a limitation to the uh, creative action of designers, uh, not at all. I think that when things come, are more difficult, fantasy of uh, human beings can be <laughs> can be thrilling and exciting so it's uh, this uh, this way of design and think rethinking garments can be even more creative than what it is now thank you and i know what you're saying because some constraints can help the design process, I would imagine, but we're gonna ask Angelo in a second. Simona, I just have a question from somebody who um, wanted to know which US university you have been working with. Quite Are confidential. You, it's, it's confidential. Sorry, it's confidential. Sorry. But it's true. It's true, it's not a lie. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't accusing you of uh, lying. No. But yeah, okay. Um, sorry, <laughs> haven't been able to get an answer for you. You have to come back next season and maybe we'll be able to talk about it then. Um, Angelo, so back to this question, because everybody has put the ball back in your court, representing uh, the designers. Exactly. <laughs> what, what is const are constraints helpful? What needs to happen from your perspective? among designers to go further and faster? Well, I think that, uh, first of all, the world, the, the, the world of fashion will be totally different in 20 years or 30 years. It's a totally different world. Um, and uh, I see uh, a much uh, deeper division of, um, uh, of what we call haute couture or really high-hand uh, high fashion and what we could call today uh, utility fashion. It doesn't mean that uh, one, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's very taken care of in terms of design and choice of material and embellishment and so on, and the other one not, but it's a totally different attitude. Uh, I do believe that uh, design, first we have to think about designers. I mean, design, design is not a way to become rich or famous, it's a, it has to become a way uh, to, to draw our future, to help uh, to draw our future. Um, producers of materials, they cannot do it alone. We can't do it alone without the producer, so we have to work together. And I believe the design has to be much more interactive and uh, um, integrated. 
Um, so uh, we should keep in mind already that uh, those trousers we are designing, they are going to become stripes, uh, to become a structure, to become uh, the, the uh, covering of, uh, of a seat or, uh, or an armchair. I think design has to um, prolong the, the, the life of the material itself and helping uh, time to get uh, the full cycle closed basically. Um, if I can add one very little thing, um, I believe that uh, uh, this is uh, the future of utility uh, fashion. Mm -hmm. So the one we, let's say the one that, uh, uh, you know, um, that belongs only to us and it belongs to our daily life. Uh, I believe the natural materials in fashion, they are going to be used less and less uh, from here up to 30 years. Uh, because, um, well, consider we are uh, 7.6 billions of uh, people at this stage. In 2050, we will be 9.7. I mean, there are measures that uh, need to be taken. Design can help uh, to, uh, to reduce waste and to um, prolong the life of material in order to digest it. But... Uh, uh, natural materials uh, are still going to be there, but I believe that in the future it's going to be less and less uh, because we will maybe prefer to, uh, you know, uh, to work on the sustainability of uh, synthetics uh, instead of uh, uh, breeding animals uh, to, uh, to get, uh, uh, to get uh, uh, the material to make a sweater. So fashion, the high-end fashion, Gucci, yeah, uh, a coat will cost 20,000 euro in 20 year time. You can rent it, you can have it for one day. If you are very, very rich, you can buy it. But all those labels, they will become like experiences boutique. You, you will enter and you will have a Gucci coffee or an Armani sound or a Balmain uh, 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 smell. Uh, you know, it's going to be much more experience than really to wear uh, on, on the mass market. But still the mass market needs uh, very good quality. And this quality with this uh, perspective of, uh, of growth of the population has really to be taken care of because uh, we can't keep on polluting this way. I find it incredible what you're the, the, the picture that you are painting. It's a, an amazing idea. But at the moment, we seem to be stuck in the reverse. So we have seen some of the luxury brands democratize their offering and bring the price point down in pursuit of mass market. And we see the quality decline in what I would call fast fashion, maybe you would call it utility. How, how are we gonna turn this around? Well, but if you, if you think, uh, this is already history in design. Um, contemporary designs uh, from the 50s, uh, like uh, from the Imes or from uh, uh, Newson, I mean, those are uh, designs that at the time were costing nothing, 60 dollars a chair now it's 600 <laughs> 700 dollars i think it's a, it's a, it's time that changes uh, rules and uh, maybe maybe the utility gucci will do utility and in a 30 years time there's going to be another brand who's the gucci of today selling experiences this i don't know what i know is that uh, uh, for sure um uh, we need uh, utility more than fashion because they are two different things. Uh, uh, they are definitely different things. Uh, and we will have to um, take care much, much more of the utility because it's a mass market and it's a, uh, it, it cannot become an emergency. But still, we all want to change uh, our, uh, our underwear and our socks. And, uh, you know, utility, it's really different layers. It's not only a rain jacket. It's uh, really something very very close to your body. Um, so it's a history that's going to uh, a little bit to put in a scale uh, um, uh, those kind of priorities. Uh, but definitely I see this uh, scenario. It's a little bit like at the time of, uh, uh, at the time of, um, uh, of uh, the Medici, eh? La, the Medici family, uh, I mean, a dress was costing like a boat. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about the, uh, the political overtones 
of a dress costing the same as a boat right now. But maybe we'll, we'll park that. We've got, we've got lots of questions. So I'd like to um, just feed in a few questions. Um, Angela, this is a good one for you. What is your opinion on repairing clothing versus oh, recyclability? Absolutely. When, I talk, when I'm talking about experience, uh, this, is also, um, this is also a way uh, an experience uh, it's uh, uh, going back to your uh, store whatever the brand is and have it gucci -fied or uh, armani -fied. absolutely this is a part of the experience and it's uh, there's a huge tremendous uh, huge uh, big big market for that especially in the in the upcoming years what do you mean by Gucci-fied or armani -fied? That you go with your sweater, maybe, I don't know, there's gonna be a kind of a, a fidelity that needs to be, uh, you know, to, 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 to take off with a certain brand because I don't know if you can take your uh, Zara pullover at Gucci, but if you take a Gucci to Gucci, maybe you will have uh, uh, another embroidery on another reparation. Of course, this is eye hand. On the other hand, if you look at the Margiela story, I think that, uh, do it yourself will inspire uh, a lot of uh, of brands and people uh, getting uh, more aware about their uh, the way that they consume and they are going to turn their uh, old stuff into new stuff so you have both you you have a domestic version and you have a very high end <laughs> version um, simona and lorenzo do you have a view on um, repair repairability is that something that interests you it's difficult to, I mean, in general, yes, repairing uh, should be should be like in the past, because in the past, uh, uh, my mom, my grandmother, they were repairing always uh, the clothes uh, and maybe pass to my sister, my little sister, blah, blah, blah. Today, we lost a little bit of this and it should be taken back. On our fabrics, uh, it's quite difficult because uh, you need a special yarns. Uh, it's, it's quite difficult to repair them, but our fabrics last forever last that long <laughs> so you don't need to repair them oh okay well that's another way around that <laughs> lorenzo did you want to add anything <laughs> no i i agree also with simon i mean we lost all these um uh you know these uh, skills in repairing things uh, repairing old clothes uh, uh so in some cases it should be taken back because now nowadays I think that we have lived in a, in a world where it's uh, use and throw away, but it's no longer the time to do that. So probably mm -hmm. it needs to come back. As we discuss a lot yeah. in, uh, with Healthy Seas and in, the, and in, in these yeah. web labs, uh, moving from the linear economy to the circular economy. So we get away from that take, make and waste mentality. Uh, we've got a question that we had even before today. Um, people were so keen to ask you this. Uh, this is from uh, Karen. As someone who is starting a sustainable fashion brand, what would be your advice to maintain a sustainable financial growth as a brand? Um, Karen makes the point that maintaining sustainable practices can contradict our financial goals, which is a very polite way of saying, <laughs> of saying that. Lorenzo, I'm going to come to you first. Do you have any advice? Well, I can imagine that it's difficult for, um, for a, a new company, for a startup, uh, to uh, keep uh, the idea of being sustainable in their product and also being sustainable financially. Um, what I see is that the, in our experience with our customers, we have had uh, uh, many examples where um, a steady, you know, steady growth, steady and maybe slow growth of a company is the best way to be sustainable. Uh, both in the product and both financially. Uh, we have seen examples of company where the growth has been uh, tremendous immediately, and then uh, either it was not sustainable financially or they lost their appeal on sustainability of their products. So I think that, uh, um, again, we go back to what used to be in the past, but uh, mm. go slow, <laughs> go slow. And nowadays we are used to fast 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 but probably it's not the right way to go and being sustainable yeah. also during sorry lucy also during these um, terrible months we have been living we have seen that um, uh, some uh, small brands uh, 
especially in the United States, uh, some small brands uh, who had uh, launched uh, their uh, collection, which is all sustainable, they have always uh, focused on that, uh, are growing, are uh, selling plus 20%, plus 30%. Uh, and we are seeing this, that the sustainability has been also a key of success even during the COVID-19, which uh, is, uh, is very... <laughs> to very... what would you to what would you attribute that why do you think that would be happening because we think that or we have seen and we have read also many magazines and newspapers that sustainability has become one of the top priorities for people during af after the covid or during the covid because we have uh, realized how important is health for our body, how important it is not to pollute. Uh, and um, the focus on sustainability now is, uh, is a must also for all the companies that have not uh, cared at all for this. Uh, yeah. Now it has become point number one in their agenda. Luckily for us, Carvico and JL have always been this as one of the point, uh, top points of our uh, business plan. And we have seen that our, the, our customers who have had the same importance given to sustainability like we did are still successful or less in difficulty than others and i believe it's uh, yes for the feeling of the people of being more careful to environment uh, uh, to pollution to avoid pollution this is a general talk of uh, all businesses not just uh, textile yeah i think um, if i can add something is a few years ago, one could think that um, uh, you know sustainable, sustainable products, sustainable clothes uh, uh, would have been uh, you know just a, a trend, a fashion trend. It, it's not a trend. It's no longer a trend. It's, it's something that's going to stay and uh, to grow more and more. Okay, and um, just before we move on to um, Angelo, I'm going to ask you to close the show with as much advice as you can give uh, any, any uh, up and coming designers and brands here. Um, Simona and Lorenzo, a couple of people are saying that they, how easy is it to get hold of your fabrics as a small uh, entity, a small designer, a small brand, um, they find it hard to access these fabrics, uh, these materials. Do you have any advice? Should they come together and form some sort of buying cooperative? How can they do it? No, I, on the, on the, on the contrary, I, I was saying that we are receiving more and more every day. We receive inquiries from uh, startups, uh, new designers, and all of them are writing to us uh, asking for sustainable fabrics because they know we have and because they know that sustainability is in our DNA and they all want to launch only sustainable products so I really hope that the new generation of designers will be able to turn the page uh, definitely on this. I don't think it's difficult to get in touch with us because we are famous to be extremely democratic. We reply to everyone, we send the color cards, hangers to everybody. Of course we are not a um, um, how can I say? We're a big industry. We can only sell to people, or to companies. We cannot sell to individual people. Of course, it's by the law. We cannot do differently. But we have also distributors around Europe. Uh, we have offices in the United States, offices in Asia. So I think uh, Carvico and Gerslo Mellina are extremely accessible to anyone. But they can write to, to the general info. They, they can search uh, surf our website and they can find the contacts of everyone in every nation. Uh, it's extremely simple. Lorenzo, do you have anything to add? You, you've answered there the, the swatch question. Yeah, um, no, I think that Simone has explained very well that the system we work, uh, both Carvico and Giorgio Melina, we work uh, specifically on, on, on a stock of colors. So most of our fabrics are on stock. So we are able to service either the small companies or the big global brands in, in, in the same way. Uh, so yes, a, apart from the fact that we cannot sell to individual, like Simona was saying, but just to companies. Uh, all the rest, I think it's quite easy and uh, accessible for, 
for us. Okay, great. So you'll have to uh, make friends with a distributor if you're, if you're very small. <laughs> okay, I'm yeah. now going to pass the mic for our last few minutes to Angelo. Angelo, I'd like you to download as much advice as you can into about two or three minutes. My goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Two or three, Angelo. Oh, gee. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I um, definitely think that uh, uh, it's advisable to go in this direction because uh, um, that's the direction for the future, as, uh, as I try to explain with, uh, with my slideshow. Um, uh, I think that people is going to consume more and more looking not just for, for a t-shirt, I mean basically a t-shirt, a quality t-shirt, it's always a t-shirt with a different print, a different logo, whatever. But people will buy with a commitment, with a promise, with a certain um, compensation. You know, people will buy the idea of your project. It's like I will buy your t-shirt, but I will buy a stock from your company because I believe in what you're doing. I believe in what you're saying. Um, it's true, economy doesn't speak always, uh, you know, nicely at the very, very beginning when you are uh, a startup, but I really think that this is the time for startup, uh, for example. What, what happened globally uh, is putting uh, the very big brands in a position, they were are not going to mix uh, in uh, multi-brands, uh, for instance. So if there's uh, someone willing to invest in new brands, this is the time. And this is a good issue to start with a new collection. Uh, by the way, there are really collections which are at the second season, like Forward, they are doing really a big success. Uh, um, and then for the, about the economy, it, it's true, but uh, we can't always uh, think, yeah, we have to think about, uh, no, I put this in another way. Um, the society, society, it's, it's really complex, yeah, and society is in balance when uh, the economical sphere, the legal sphere, and the cultural sphere are all in balance, yeah. So if there's an imbalance uh, in one of those three, we get some mess, eh? or we get some luck, we get some problems. So it's true, we have to think about the economy, but I would look more for this balance than, you know, to make, uh, uh, to, to, to stop before I start uh, thinking that I'm not gonna sell enough. There is uh, many, many aspects that we have to take care of. Um, and this is the moment. There's no other moment. I think it's time to start with a totally new approach and the market is uh, responding very well. By the way, I'm a millennial, as, uh, as you said, but it's not a generation that we have to keep uh, in mind. Millennials, I'm sorry, I'm a millennial, so I'm putting, you know, the gun against me, but uh, we are a little bit hackers and uh, mercenaries. I mean, Gen Z, uh, my son, who's 18, is much more uh, scrupulous and uh, is, uh, is inquisitive, he wants to know things, why the things are coming up this way, why the things are not going that way, why this t-shirt is like this, why the t-shirt is like that. So it's really time to think uh, uh, to a step further and I'm sure that the change uh, can happen, absolutely. Amazing, thank you. That's such an amazing mm. uh, lot of points, a lot of crunch yeah. points for us to take with us and very optimistic as well. Just one very quick thing. You mentioned a brand, did you say Forward? That's on the second, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, great. I just uh, wanted to make sure. Um, a huge, huge thank you to our panelists. We could talk to you all day, but unfortunately we are out of time. But I hope that everyone has got a real sense of uh, the amazing work that you've done and the amazing progress that you've made and what is gonna happen in the future as well. I wanna say thank you to everybody who is watching from Washington, from Texas, from Croatia, wow. Julia in Italy, please get well soon. I know you're in hospital, people joining us from hospital. <laughs> um, this is how important this issue is to everybody. Now this is our last uh, web lab of this season. So I wanna say a massive thank you to Healthy Seas and particularly to the brilliant Jenny because without her, this wouldn't have happened. Um, oh, thank you so much, Lucy. Without no, you, thank it you. <laughs> well, it's been so great. Um, I, I don't know if anyone's joined us for all of them, but you will have learned a lot because I've learned a lot. My my brain has like expanded during this season. Um, but this one has been particularly special. So I want to say a huge thank you to Simona, to Lorenzo, and to thank Angelo. You. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully. We'll do this again sometime because I've really enjoyed it. Okay. <laughs> okay.
Thank signing you. off now. Ciao. And, um, we'll see you take next care, time. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Ciao. Bye. -bye.